not another SMA offset strategy. Well, yes, actually I do present you with one. In this video, I will make no exception when it comes to presenting trading strategies that have the potential to make us money in the crypto market, even if they are adaptions of other versions. Just like the popular Nostalgia for Infinity or NFIX trading algorithm, there can be multiple adaptions of the same base strategy rules, which can add significant improvements to the original baseline. This time, the author Rally Panos presents another iteration of his or hers trading algorithm. On my setup, it showed promising results, so I therefore want to present you with these results. Just like other versions, this code can be found on GitHub to download. And I'll add all the locations in the description below for your convenience. Like I always say, all kudos and compliments go to the original author of the trading algorithm. I'm just a guy that tests this out and show the promising results on the YouTube. So let's find out what actually happens with the spot trading algorithm and try to understand its parameters and rules so that we can understand a little bit what makes it tick and why it does its buy and sells. After the import of the necessary libraries, it's time to define some parameter settings and the first custom indicator. These parameter settings are later used in the strategy as the default settings on which to make trades on. Here the Elliott Wave oscillator is created and we'll see later if this is actually used in the code. The next part defines the interface version and since we are already at version 3, I know this is an old code. But hopefully it still remains profitable because sometimes all the algorithms can lose their edge. Now the ROI table will take profits after a certain amount of time when the strategy has the configured profits reached. Here at 21.5% at any time, 3% at 40 minutes, 1.6% at 87 minutes and after 201 minutes it will just end its trade if there are no profits made. To me this already seems that the parameters are found after a hyper optimizing session since they are not nice round numbers but I could be mistaken of course. The stop loss is set at 35% so after entering the trade it's possible that after 35% loss the algorithm will exit the trade here. The SMA offset setting here defines the range in which the optimal settings should be sought if you want to hyper optimize this trading strategy. It searches for the optimal SMA length and low and high offsets if you are going to optimize this algorithm. The next section here shows that the trading stop loss has been set, of which I am not very fond of since it can influence the backtest results. Furthermore, the proposed time frame is set here and initially the 5 minute time frame should be the best one. Then the informative time frame is set and this is the uh, 1 hour time frame here. Some startup candle counts and the plot configuration is configured over here. And the plot configuration plots the MA buy and sell lines if you want to create a visual output of the backstage results of a pair. But the real interesting thing starts here at the populate indicators method. In this part of the strategy there are several key technical indicators calculated that will help you with the buy and sell decisions. First, the exponential moving average or EMAs are calculated for both buying and selling signals. Next there is the whole moving average, a 50 period average that helps smooth out price movements, along with a 100 period EMA and a short term 9 period simple moving average, probably to capture short term price trends. For momentum the Elliott Wave Oscillator or EWO is calculated. This indicator was defined earlier in this code and it measures the differences between the two EMAs which gives us insight into market momentum. And finally here the relative strength index or RSI. It is defined in three different time frames, 14, 4 and 20 periods, probably to assess overbought or oversold conditions and help us time our entries and exits. Let's discuss the buy and sell rules next. There are three separate buy signals created. EWO1, EWO2 and EWO low. Each of these rules consists of further individual buy rules. I'll only discuss the first rule here, the others can be good homework assignment for you to find out what they do. The buy 1 signal gets active when the RSI is below 35, the close price is below a threshold where the MA buy line with the length that has been set in the hyperparameter section is multiplied by the offset value that's also configured in the hyperparameter section by the way. 
then the Elliott Wave Oscillator should be above the EWO high threshold, the RSI should be below the RSI threshold, and there should be also at least some volume detected. And finally, the close price should be below the SMA sell line times its threshold value too. Now, I believe that the intention behind this set of buy rules is to identify a strong buying opportunity where the market is showing signs of being oversold, but with the momentum indicating a potential upward movement. Now try to find out yourself what the intention is of these two other buy signals. As for the sell signals, they are also separated in two different sell conditions, each with its own rules, besides the ROI and stop loss of course. The first rule of the first sell condition states to sell when the close price is above the SMA 9 and when the close price is above the configured SMA sell length times the offset. Also the RSI indicator should be above 50, the volume should be above 0 and the RSI fast should be above the RSI slow indicator. Now the second sell rule is almost the same, but here the close price should be below the HMA 30 instead of using the RSI. Another set of sell rules is where the whole moving average times 1.149 is lower or even than the EMA 100, or when the close price is higher or even higher than the EMA 100 times 0.951. Now before I did a backtest I also did a look ahead bias analysis and a recursive analysis and here are these results. So let's now continue with the backtest and let me show you the results I got on my setup. In the meantime, I want to thank you for viewing this video, and if you like what I do, then please click like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notified on my future videos. All the files that I create, the strategy code, notebooks, backtest outputs, and other informational blog posts on what I do are available on my Patreon site. This way, you can check out my work and replicate what I do, just to be fully transparent here. If you want to enjoy discounts or other benefits on many trading related services that I personally use, like Bybit, TradingView, Linode and many others, then you can use the affiliate links that I have in the description below. Again, many thanks for your support, and now let's get back to the results I got from my backtests. The first backtest results I want to show you are that of the strategy where the trading stop loss is active. You see that the profits made by this trading strategy are pretty good with an overall hypothetical win of 3126%, uh, a very respectable 75% win rate and only a 5% drawdown. Also, 93% of the pairs seem to respond well to this algorithm. And these results in an equity curve that you see now. Nice steady upward movements, here and there a small drawdown, but further nothing to worry about. I also tested this strategy out without using a trailing stop loss, to see if this was of great influence on the strategy's results. But surprisingly here the results were even better. So I'll discuss these results instead of those with the TSL activated. The win profits ended up even higher. The win percentage got a little bit lower, just like the drawdown and pairs ratio, but the other performance indicators scored a little bit higher, so eventually this overall score ended up higher as well. But the differences are minimal, the equity curve has almost the same admirable rise to a higher end result, and the drawdown's biggest spike is in this case just over 5%, with an average drawdown of even lower than 1%. Furthermore, most weeks offer positive results, and only when the last bear market was in full swing, there were some weeks with negative results. Now the box plots of the win distribution and the profit distribution always give good insights in the past performance over the dataset I used. The win rate distribution shows a relative tight spread, with most trades active within the range of 60 to 85%, and that suggests a moderate consistency in successful trades. There are some outliers at 20% and even 0%, but these are rare occasions. On the profit distribution side, the majority of weekly profits cluster around a small range, and this indicates relative stable returns. But there are some noticeable outliers both on the high end, around 12,000, and at the low end, around uh, minus 2,000. And this suggests that the strategy has the potential for large gains, but it also carries some risk of significant losses during certain periods. So comparing the end results with the other very successful trading strategies shows that it can certainly match itself with the big boys. 
It might not be the highest gainer, but considering its steady rise, it's certainly worth your attention and further investigation. Also, some of the performance indicators show promising results, and sometimes have even higher scores than the ones that are currently in the top 10 of best hypothetical performance, like the Kalmar, Sortino, and especially the Sharpe ratio, profit factor, and pairs ratio. So you see, sometimes it's worth taking the time to check out another version or iteration of an already well-known trading strategy. You might even add your own specific indicator or trading rule to the equation and it could perform even better. If you do, then please add this to the comment section below so that others can check out your work as well. For me this algo is interesting enough to do a forward test with and I will do this in the future. And I might even present you with the findings after a while after I have taken this algorithm to the test. Now, I hope you have enough information about this trading algorithm and have added this to your arsenal too, or at least taken it into consideration for testing. I think I have enough said about this strategy, so this is it for this video and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!